Hello everyone and welcome to another incredible game from the 1973 great tournament in Tallinn. Uh, it's Mikhail Tal against uh, uh, Paul Keres playing with the home field advantage uh, and uh, uh, this game is really incredible. You will not believe how many times uh, an, uh, an offer uh, of a piece can be made. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, uh, it goes out uh, throughout the entire game. You guys are going to enjoy that. And here we have a very uh, specific encounter, Tal versus Karis. Uh, Karis is not someone to be scared of easily uh, by someone like Tal. As you know, Tal, uh, you know, enjoys complicating things. Then people get scared. Then maybe they don't go for the sharpest continuation. They're afraid that Tal will outplay them there. Uh, Karis, not so much. Uh, Karis accepts everything Tal throws at him and then just uh, counters and beats him. Or that was uh, usually the case. If you remember the 1959 candidates tournament, Tal won first place, uh, Karis won second, but uh, only because Tal, uh, you know, crushed everyone else. Uh, but in his encounter against Karis, Karis won won three games, Tal only won one game. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, something to also be taken into consideration. But okay, this is a, a game um, uh, for itself, so let's uh, check it out uh, and hopefully enjoy it. And this uh, all has been happening during Tal's incredible streak, so he's uh, only been winning games and drawing games, he was not losing games. This incredible streak is um, uh, actually two streaks, uh, one is from uh, July 1972 to April 1973. Tal played 86 games uh, and then uh, won 47 and only lost 39, or rather only drew 39, no losses. And between October 23rd, uh, 1973 and October 16 of 1974, he played 95 consecutive games uh, and uh, he won 46 of those games and drew 49. So no, no losses. And this was all, you know, in between when Bobby Fischer became world champion. So no, of course, everyone thought that uh, Tal was, um, uh, you know, uh, Tal had good chances of becoming the next challenger. Uh, but okay. Uh, let's check it out. This game is uh, incredible. Uh, let's see what happens. So Tal with the white pieces opens with e4. Uh, we have e5 by Keres, knight to f3, knight to c6, and now bishop to b5. Tal goes for the Rui Lopez uh, opening. We have a6, Morphe's defense, and bishop to a4. Uh, we have d6, uh, the so-called modern Steinitz defense, castles by Tal, and bishop to d7. So this has all been played before, nothing new even for, for those days. Uh, we have c3, uh, preparing to strike in the center with the d4 at some point. Also, you can uh, retreat the bishop to, uh, to, to c2, not only b3, uh, and uh, knight g to e7 now. We have d4 by Tal and knight to g6. So just, you know, keeping everything uh, nicely closed. Uh, we have rook to e1 and now bishop to e7. Uh, Keres is ready uh, to castle. We have knight b to d2, preparing the standard maneuver, knight to f1, then to e3 or g3, h6, and knight to f1. We have bishop to g5 now, uh, attacking Tal's bishop on c1, and here you could trade, but uh, even if you um, capture the bishop, yes, you now have the bishop pair after h captures on g5, it's a, uh, uh, well, I, I would very much enjoy having black here, the rook has the semi-open file to be used for attacking purposes, knight can come to f4, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's a wonderful position for black. So instead, after bishop to g5, Tal plays bishop to e3, just continues development, and here Keres trades once, we have bishop captures knight, captures, and now only now Keres castles and now uh, bishop back to c2 and the bishop will be very nice on this diagonal so here rook to e8 uh, now uh, after this is captured the e4 pawn uh, will, will be somewhat weak but bishop already defends it so here queen to d2 tal is uh, you know free to just uh, develop his pieces the rooks are now connected and rook to c8 by Keres. we have g3 uh, and this g3 move is uh, basically where the magic happens here uh, Tal can now bring the knight to g2, uh, he can bring the king to g2, just improve his position a little bit, uh, but also uh, he leaves the knight on f3 unguarded, and here you can play queen to f6, develop the queen with tempo, and attack the knight. Now, is there a reason not to do this? Well, uh, there certainly doesn't appear to be one, and Keres agrees with this, uh, and he goes queen to f6, uh, but this is exactly what Tal wanted, so we could reach the position from the thumbnail, Tal just plays knight to d5, he attacks uh, Keres's queen, uh, and offers the knight on f3. And wh what is this madness? How can you just offer a piece like this? This is... Uh... 
I mean, it's beautiful, but what what compensation does White have? Uh, well, Keras uh, says I I don't believe in this. He plays Queen captures on f3, uh, and now comes Bishop to d1, just attacking the Queen here on f3. And it seems like the Queen does not have a um, uh, any square where where she can retreat. So feel free to pause the video here and try to figure out not that obviously, and try to figure out why Keras uh, grabbed the Knight on f3 while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, realizing that we have to create some squares for the queen. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is, of course, knight to h4. That's the good stuff, because now we're threatening checkmate. So the, this move cannot be ignored. And we can't really capture the queen. If we capture the queen, just knight captures on f3 with check. King has to move. Now knight captures on d2. And we're up a piece. Of course, we're completely winning here. So after this knight to h4 move, Tal says, all right, g captures on h4. And now Keras plays just queen to h3, saying, OK, now I have a bishop here uh, attacking white's king side. The queen is already on h3. Maybe the rook can also join the attack. So wh wh what is Tal doing here? Is he out of his mind? Uh, but Tal just plays knight to f6 and delivers a check. So now he sacrifices more material, attacks the, uh, the checks the king, forks the rook and the bishop here. And you can't really capture this knight. You could but um, uh, uh, accepting this knight is basically a draw. So here Tal plays knight to f6 check, and it's kind of a, a draw offer, unless Tal saw something, I don't know what. It's hard to imagine. Uh, but the thing is, if the knight is captured, the idea is queen captures on h6. And now uh, it's incredibly dangerous. Rook to e3 is coming. This would come uh, with tempo as the queen is on h3. We're going to play rook to g3 check and it's game over. So the only defense you have here is d ca uh, e captures on d4. And now, OK, we can't lift the rook this way, but we can play king to h1 and prepare rook to g1 and now knight to e5. And finally, after rook to g1 check, bishop to g4. This is the only good defense for black. And now after rook to g3, uh, sort of winning the queen, uh, we have to go for this perpetual queen f1 check, rook to g1, queen h3. And now we simply repeat as there is nothing better. So this is uh, what would probably happen if Keras accepts the knight uh, sacrifice on, on f6. So Keras says, nope, we're playing this. I can I can win this. I mean, your position is just disgusting. Uh, you, you can you know do whatever you want there. So here Tal grabs the rook. We have knight captures on e8. Rook capture sunny eight but still now this rook can uh, come into the attack very easily so tal just plays h5 and now the pawn on h5 is nicely protected and you don't have to worry about rook to e6 to g6 maneuver so here bishop to g4 uh, attacking the, the the bishop here, and you will have to trade here. You can't uh, if the bishop comes to f3, then the trade will be forced. So queen to e3. Now Tal says, but now it's uh, me who's up material. Uh, so <laughs> you do, do you now want to trade queens? And you can't really do this. If queen captures rook, captures we can trade here. Captures, captures. It's two rooks uh, against a knight and rook, and black really has no compensation now uh, for the sacrifice material. Uh, so uh, Keras just picks up the h5 pawn, and now king to h1. Now Tal frees up the g file to be used for uh, uh, for his rook. So bishop captures on d1, rook a captures on d1, and now we have queen to h4, and now queen to f3. Now attacking the f7 pawn, so Keras defends it, king to g8, and then now rook to e3. Uh, so how do you continue here? You, uh, rook to g1, uh, you could also try rook to g1 here. It's a very nice uh, square, but then after e captures on d4, uh, the e4 pawn is attacked twice. So Tal feels that it's necessary to uh, for the rook to remain on the e file. So rook to e3, we have rook to f8, and now queen to g3. Now Tal is the one who's uh, being uh, you know a sneaky bastard here. He says, now uh, I'm up material, uh, let's just trade and go into the end game. So of course, uh, uh, Keras cannot allow this. He goes back. Queen to e7 and now f4. Now we want to start pushing our pawns uh, in front of the black king. So e captures on f4, queen captures and now rook to e8. But now it doesn't seem like there's all that much for Keras to do here. We have rook to g1, uh, preparing to bring the other rook into the attack as well. King to h7. Uh, and now rook to g4. So we need this pawn protected uh, before we bring this rook into the attack. We have knight to d8 now, uh, putting more uh, the defense to this f7 pawn. And now Tal plays e5. He says, I don't mind if you play knight to e6 because I have a very sneaky plan here. If you play knight to e6, uh, I'm just going to play queen e4 check and pick up the b7 pawn. So Keras has to wait... Um, 
to play knight to e6. So Keras plays d5, he takes away the e4 square from the white queen, and now we have rook to h3. And here you can see just how much pressure Tal uh, is uh, putting um, onto the black king's position. And again, knight to e6 looks like a great move, but it can't be played. If knight to e6, it's a very simple mate in 3, rook captures and g7 check. Now it doesn't matter if king captures or knight captures, we just capture here and deliver checkmate. So of course that's out of the question. So after rook to h3, queen to f8 is played to add a, 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 a additional support here, but now comes rook back to f3. Now again, putting pressure on the f7 pawn, you can't really move the queen or the knight. Uh, so what do you play here? King to h8, and now we have queen to f5. Uh, just, uh, you know, n nothing nothing for Keras to do here. We have queen back to e7, and now even b4. Uh, it's, uh, you know, you, you can just play a brilliancy without inserting a b4, at least, uh, you know, somewhere in the game. We have rook to f8, and now comes queen to h5. Again, with uh, so many incredible threats, and it seems like Keras defended a little bit, and now he can finally bring the knight into the game, which he does, uh, but now it's, uh, you know... Uh, dead lost for black, feel free to pause the video here and uh, finish the game for Tal while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations uh, on listening to what I've been saying from the start. Uh, you know, this game is just uh, sacrifice after sacrifice after offering another sacrifice and after 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 sacrifice. <laughs> so congratulations to everyone who found Rook to F6. This is the only move that wins the game uh, and Tal, of course, played it. And now uh, there's really no good defense. Rook captures on H6 is the threat. Um, there's nothing to be done here. If the Rook is accepted, then just Queen captures on H6 is mate in one. So what can you play here? Uh, not not all that much. Uh, we have uh, king to h7, but it doesn't really help. We have queen to f5 with check. And now if you block with g6, it still doesn't help. We're just going to capture here. And after f captures, queen captures on g6 with check. King h8, queen captures on h6 with check. King to g8, and now rook captures on e6. This is uh, perfectly uh, fine. There's nothing for black to do here. Once you move the queen, doesn't really matter where. We can even play rook to g6 and win the black queen. So after queen to f5 check, we have king to h8, and now rook to h4. Again, Tal is threatening some rook captures on h6 action. So king to g8, trying to get uh, out of this nasty pin, but now queen to g4. Again, now the g pawn is pinned, and you are threatening rook captures on h6. So here, Keras plays knight to g5, so now the g pawn is not pinned, but Tal doesn't care. Tal just captures on h6 right away. And look at this, the rook here can be captured, the rook here can be captured, but uh, you know, neither rook can really be captured. If you capture on f6, then just rook captures on f6, and well, that's just it. The knight can't move, we're gonna play captures with check, and then rook h6 checkmate, and if you capture the other rook, for example, g captures on h6, then we play h4, and black is without a move. Once you play something, doesn't really matter what, we're gonna capture here, and after something like this, king f8, we can even play e6, and this is now completely winning. So after this, rook captures on h6, uh, Keras played knight to e4, uh, but it doesn't really matter. Queen to h5. Again, you could capture many rooks here, uh, but it doesn't matter which one you capture. If you capture this with the knight, then rook h8 is checkmate. If you capture this, uh, then again, just rook h8 to check. King g7, queen to h7 is checkmate. So g captures on h6 was played, but even this doesn't help. Just uh, we have uh, rook captures on h6, and he was in this position on move 44 that Paul Keres resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. Whatever you play here, we're just going to play rook to h8, followed by queen to h7 checkmate, for example, queen g5, just rook here, king g7, queen to h7 checkmate. So really an incredible game uh, by uh, by the, the magician. First, uh, you know, going for this beautiful, beautiful knight to d5 move, knight to d5, just offering this knight on f3. I mean, what uh, what imagination. And then after all of this, uh, you know, just... Uh, 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 okay, uh, Keres, of course, calculated that he will not lose the queen, but then knight f6, uh, you know, totally daring uh, Keres, uh, will you accept the draw here or, or will you play play for the win because my position is, you know, really, really terrible, uh, but it seems that uh, Tal calculated perfectly because if you put this uh, position to an engine, it will give you this as a, you know, as a dead draw and uh, the, the move that uh, Keres played king to h8 as, you know, be better for white, but it's slightly better and Tal evaluated uh, it perfectly. Yeah. <laughs>
So if you enjoyed this game, of course, do check out other games uh, that uh, I, I always put in uh, the, the description below. So you can check out the 1959 Candidates Tournament. You can check out Tal's match against um, uh, Mikhail Botvinnik. Uh, and also you can check out some of uh, Tal's other games against Paul Keres, also from the 1959 Candidates Tournament. Uh, those will all be in the description below. But uh, if you guys don't have all that much time, uh, the first link you will see in the description below will be Tal's first encounter with Keres. It's really an enjoyable game. So uh, do check uh, out at least that one if, if you can manage. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. For those of you who uh, didn't watch yesterday's video, these are the standings of this tournament. Tal won it with an incredible 12 out of 15. Left Pologaevsky with 10 and a half out of 15. And then uh, a lot of very, very strong players with 9 out of 15, like Balashov, Bronstein, Keres, Spassky, uh, and then, you know, uh, Anderson, Livone, Jan Timan, you know, just an incredible, incredible tournament, but Tal just crushed everyone. Uh, so yeah, uh, once again, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Samuel Swanson, Mr. Hoodie Guy, Michael Kalber, Knut Ivan Skogland, and Christoph Schmidt for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the coverage uh, of uh, you know whatever else is happening in the chess world and checking up on your wonderful suggestions. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.